Hey YouTube, what's going on? Uh, so I'm getting started building my quadcopter. Uh, I went ahead and got the, um, all my motors mounted up to each arm. Uh, one thing about these uh, DYS motors is that they uh, come with a hardware kit in each one. And you get a bunch of 7mm screws and a bunch of 5s. So depending on the thickness of your arms you're going to want to use different the different length of the screws. So in this case, these are uh, three millimeter thick arms. So what I had to do is use the five millimeter uh, screws because the sevens it's going to be kind of hard to see in there. But the sevens basically, when I tried a seven, it went in too far and it was uh, contacting the wire, and I don't want uh, later on to have a bunch of vibration causing that motor uh, to rub on the tip of the bolt or the screw and um, maybe wearing through shorting out uh, you know best case scenario in shorting out is the motor stops working worst case scenario is you're gonna get a fire so um, I use the five millimeter length screws uh, if I can get that to focus there come on focus yeah and um, you only get two holes to line up unless I wanted to drill out some of these others. So um, uh, from what I've seen, a lot of people just use the two the two bolts. Get out of here, kitty. Sorry. Excuse me. Uh, just use the two bolts on there. Sorry about that. Cat getting in the shot. Um, and I used a little Loctite. So just put a dab of Loctite in the plastic tray and dip the tip of each screw in there as I was about to run it in. Uh, same thing on the prop adapter here on top. Um, I just took that same little bit of Loctite on each screw, uh, ran it in there. So you don't have to like crank them, crank them down. You don't want to strip anything, but uh, with the Loctite on there, they're not gonna they're not gonna come loose. Sorry about that focus. It keeps focusing on the mat. All right. So anyway, got them all done like that. Um, now I know you need to have two motors spinning clockwise and two spinning counterclockwise and um, so a way I devised to try to figure out how to solder this correctly the first time is with using uh, these jumper wires so I'm basically making some temporary connections with these jumper wires all different colors um, to go from my battery to uh, the ESC and uh, the ESC has got three leads right three uh, motor wires going out. I've connected them in a manner that I designate myself as, you know, being one, two, three, connected to one, two, three. And the way you determine which direction your motor is going to spin is just by swapping any two of the three wires. So in this case, let's say I've got white, yellow, green, that equals one, two, three to me. If I were to switch yellow and green and make that a one, three two then the motor would spin the other way so uh, here's how that works right so you get a little servo tester these are very cheap I actually picked up a couple of them because in case one was a dud when I received it um, they were like three three dollars or something through 295 through eBay free shipping um, so I got a couple of these um, you just connect that to the servo lead coming off the ESC um, I have temporarily jumpered in to my XT60 cable here to connect to the battery. And then, I mean, just the, the thing you want to be real careful of is that none of these are going to touch each other because then you short out, possibly let the magic smoke out. So, um, anyway, connect your servo tester to the servo lead coming off the uh, ESC. You got your wires 1, 2, 3 from the ESC to your 1, 2, 3 wires on the motor. Uh, I've just stuck this uh, hex key in here to show the direction. And then, so you got your power lead over here, and we'll just plug it into our battery. And we should get our little chirps from the motor, telling us everything's okay. Alright, and so you can see that there. And I just give it a little bit of juice on the servo tester. Alright, now we're spinning around. 
around there and you can see that in this configuration which I'm going to call 1, 2, 3 we get counterclockwise movement of that motor. So if we were to disconnect the power just for now. Now if I um, switch the 1, 2, 3 order into a 1, 3, 2 order just by changing yellow and green we should see that it spins the other way. Okay, everybody's plugged back in and not touching. Let's reconnect power. Alright, we're ready to go. Give it a little bit of gas. Should go clockwise. And there we go, it's going clockwise. Now it's very uh, stuttery. I'm, I'm assuming it's stuttery because just these, you know, temporary connections here. Uh, at least I hope so, because I've tried two of them and they both were kind of stuttery. It could just be the, the way that this servo tester is doing things. Um, I'm thinking when I have everything soldered up properly, I should be clear to go on there. But anyway, um, so this is a quick and easy way. Didn't cost me a whole lot uh, to show how I need to solder these up so that I get two motors doing clockwise and two motors doing counterclockwise. Um, and then I can just like put a little piece of tape on them or something uh, when I put them on the frame so I know which corner is which. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, that's a quick tip during this um, during this build process. Like I said at the beginning, I'm a total newbie at this. Um, maybe there was a better way to determine counterclockwise versus clockwise. I don't know. Um, I just didn't want to be like, okay, let me solder the three wires on there. Oh, it's uh, not spinning the right way. Let me desolder two of them and flip them over. I'm, at least this way I know from the beginning. I, I'm, I'm soldering it correctly from the beginning. It, that just I wanted to do it that way. So if you have any better uh, suggestions or something else that would have been easier to do, please leave it down in the comments. Um, you know, Somebody else might be reading this, uh, getting started on their own build, and um, wanting to see a good way to do it so so please share if you know something different all right thanks for watching